And welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. Hey man. Hey man. What is up, Jacob Wolf? It's been a day, man. I know, man. There's, there's some, you know, life just sometimes has to kick you in the dick. There is no doubt about life's dick kick, dick kicking ability. Yeah, it, uh, and it usually comes out of nowhere and just takes, it takes the life out of you. Yeah. Like it just, oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just had some like a not a car troubles, a car scare today. Yeah. Um and just like possible overheating. And I've had a car overheat before on the engine and it I remember taking it in. It was my first car. And I remember taking it in and they were like, Hey, so you're pretty much like fried your yeah. entire engine. And I was like, Cool. What does that mean? And uh, they said a bunch of words I still don't understand to this day. But then they were like, It's gonna be, I don't know. $1,500 to fix. I was like, that is more than I paid for this fucking car, yeah. dude. Like, what are you talking about? Was that Nadav? Was that his name? No, no, it was Adele. Adele. Yeah, I had a, I had a mechanic in LA. Uh, by the way, if you know me and you need a good mechanic, he's in LA, text me or DM me or whatever. By the way, a very honest, good dude. Yeah, and he, he ended up dropping, he ended up figuring out like a MacGyver way to fix the yep. engine for $700 instead of 15. And he was like, I been, I was up all night thinking about it. He's this old, probably 60 year old Armenian dude named Adele. Yeah. Uh, and, and he, and when you would walk in, he would be like, I'm going to fix your engine. So good. I will fix it. I'll look under the hood. That was pretty good. Actually. Thank you. I'm not going to lie. Thank you. I'm going to give you that one. That was right. pretty good. Appreciate it. Uh, but yeah. And then, uh, you know, just, just, just life shit, man. It's just, uh, you know what I might, can I give you my perspective on life, tough times in general? I mean, sure. Yeah, because you know, I'm going to do it. Anyways. If I, even if I said no, you're still going to tell me. So. Thousand percent. Yep. I really believe that life and the, and the universe tests you, especially if things are kind of going good. The universe wants is is testing you to see what your metal is, to see yeah. if you're gonna quit. And I think, and this has always been this way for my career and my life, is when you don't quit, at, when things are at their worst, yeah. what's next is always something great. I I truly believe that. Yeah. The longer you stay in the muck which is kind of what the universe is like, here it is. Here's a shit. You want to sit in it? This is, this is what I'm telling you, you deserve. And then you're like, that's right. This is what I deserve. And I'm, that's not your voice. That's everybody. Hmm. But I think if you fucking ride it out, what's on the other side is always the best. Dude, you know, I won't say I'll, I'll agree with that. Cause I also feel like I will say, yeah, life when sometimes life is like, oh, like going all right. It does. It, it just puts an obstacle. Cause it's like, Hey, don't forget. This is life. This is life. Life's not fair. Not everything's perfect. Like, you're just like, this is what people go through. And guess what? Your shit that sucks isn't, like, people you can't compare sucks. We've said that before. Yeah. But also, it's like, you you put it into perspective. Like, yeah, like, today I, I noticed my, you know, the car getting a little hotter than usual. And so, for me, the silver lining in that is, if I wasn't always checking that fucking meter, 50 more miles in, my whole engine could have blown. And I could have been in a completely different situation not sitting here with you today because my car would be on the side of the road. I'm fucking trouble. So it's just like, you know, I, but there's dude, always something worse. There's something worse that could have happened in this situation. And also there's a ton of people going through way more shit. Perspective. Like, like I, I was talking to a friend recently who, and I was kind of in a, like no matter how good of a spot I'm in mentally, there's always, everybody goes through minutes or times where they're like, oh, motherfucker, right? Yeah. And I was in one of those times and I was talking to a friend of mine who she, she was having problems, okay? And with her, uh, where she was living and she's out of work. She's got no family. Yeah. She's got no, Zero people 
to turn to for help. And it put in perspective for me at the end of the day, holy shit, I have such a great family. Yeah. I have so many people that I can lean on. And this person is alone in the world. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what's happening, like perspective, perspective, perspective of what I have and not what I don't have. Yeah. Sometimes it's good just to get slapped right in the face with that. Yeah. I just feel like with certain parts of life for the last two months, I've just been. I agree. Kind of slapped around. I agree. So I just, uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, it's like a tipping point. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just, and I apologize to everybody for the lack of energy on this podcast from my side. Uh, listening or watching, however you're viewing this or listening, it's just a, uh, it's just one of those days, man, where I'm just, I've, it's everything kind of adds up, and I'm, you know, I'm going to perform tonight. I'm featuring at a show, so, yep. you know, I'll pick my shit up for that and get my shit going. And, uh, but you know, it's, uh, dude, I've, I've become the type of person who is not going to just put a smile on for everybody else anymore. I, first of all, I'm so happy to hear that. That is amazing. Good, I, I, good for you. I'm also just like, I'm glad this is the first place I'm like being here with you before I go to the show. I also like, I know this is a safe space. So I know that I can come in and just be like, yeah, because I'm going to get it all out of my system. And then by the time I go to my show, I'm going to be like, all right, now I'm going to put a smile on, but also because I got to perform. So I got to keep my energy up because if I stick at this level, my set's going to be shit. And my set, like in my jokes and who I am, and it just needs energy. And that's what, for me, at least for comedy and how I do it. So yeah. I just, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I wanted, I'm glad that we're doing this because it gives me the hour to just kind of, we're still going to talk and we're trying to talk about shit. And, yeah. but right now in all of it, like it just gives me, you know, selfishly an hour to just sulk for a little bit. Like to just remember, and by the way, your feelings are your feelings and you should never feel bad about having your feelings, right? You should also at some point in time be like, I'm going to give myself this amount of time to feel this way. And then I'm going to make a choice not to. That's well. That's that's right. what I'm doing because 100%. I also know I have a fucking job to do. After yeah, this, that I've had this show booked since it, mid July. And just remember, if something is happening in your life for two months that is causing stress, it might be just time to look at that thing and yeah. just be like, "Do you know what I mean?" And just be like, I, I, and write down pros and cons, and write down is this the right thing for me at this point in time in my life. And everybody's got to do that, dude. Everybody's got to make tough decisions yeah. and, and everybody. And so I love you and I'm glad that you feel like this is a safe place oh, and you good. can, yeah, you can always come and be whoever you want to be in front of me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just, uh, just, just in a jam, man. Yeah. I hear you, just, dude. Just, I hear yeah, you. I'm, I'm really, really feeling the effects yep. of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, uh, Okay. That's just where I'm at with no, life. Right now. No worries. I will, I have, I feel great. So I will throw whatever energy I have. whoop de doo basil. basil. Basil? Basil. It's B-A-S-I-L is Basil. They say his name Basil. His name is Basil. I, I don't think but it's they spelled. Just, they just say it because that's their British accent. I don't think accent. it's spelled B-A-S-I-L. A hundred percent Basil is spelled B A S I L from Austin Power. Yeah, whoop de doo, Basil. <laughs> if it was out of context and not from a movie, I would give it to you. But it's part of the movie. It might be spelled with an E at the end of it. I feel like it's B A S S. No, Basil. No, it's either B A S I L or B A S I L E. Um, but it's not B A S S I L. Basil. That's too. It's it like is, dessert. It is, it is B A S I L. Hello. Wait, do you know what his last name is in the movie? Ooh, give me. Okay, this is gonna be a good time. I, I've, I, I've, I didn't even know this. Did you know this, Matt? Okay, so can you? I'm gonna take four guesses. No, I, one, one guess, but five. You're gonna give me an initial clue. What path to go down? Ready, go. I was just gonna say, Matt, you might need to help me with this one. I, I don't even. I don't even know where to go with that last, like, with Tell me with with the that. letter it spells. It starts with. E. Hold on. I Hold on. Because ba Basil. Okay. Is it a, is it a word along with the last name? Like, is it, is it a word? It's a word. Yeah. Okay. Ba and I remember his character. Does it have anything to do with his character? Does, does it describe yeah. his character? Uh, not just, I mean. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was going to say. It describes what his character does in the movie. What his role is. Mm -hmm. I did it. By the way, I don't even think I knew this was a word. Really? But also, sometimes I'm illiterate, so. Sometimes I'm illiterate? Yeah, is sometimes. The, by the way, is a great t-shirt. Yeah. Sometimes I'm illiterate? Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or I'm illiterate when I want to be type shit. Yeah. That yeah. is a great t-shirt. Yeah, sometimes I have. Sometimes I'm illiterate. Yeah, I don't, uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know this was a word. Okay. Uh, what's the second letter? E what? X. Basil example. No. Basil exit row. <laughs> no. Basil. By the way, you said you were going to have four questions and then one guess. And so far, that was one one question, two hints, and e two guesses. Yeah. I I'm, I'm changing the rules because I made them. Okay. Ba e X. Basil. It's what? E examiner. Nope. Two more guesses. Do you even know? You know what his job is in the movie, right? He's the he's the handler. Whoop de doo, Basil. You said it right. Uh -huh. Isn't he the guy? He's like the guy handler. Isn't he the handler? Isn't he the dude who works at the at the wherever the spy thing is? Right. I love watching your brain work for this. This is super fun. Okay. Whoop de doo, Basil. You said it right again. My yeah. Man. So I did. It's not example. Examiner. Nope. I think you just said that. Uh, did I said, he? I said exit right. Yeah, you, I no, did? No, no, you said examiner twice. Okay. Uh, Don't say examiner again. Bazit. Bazit. Basil executor. Nope. Basil excavator. Nope. Okay, what is it? Basil exposition. Zero, I would have never I think that's that. what I said. Like, I, I didn't even think he had a last name in the movie. That is a dick, but that's the worst last name yeah. I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exposition? Yeah. That's not what, well, maybe, because that's what he gets out information. That explains what's happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basil Exposition. It's a bad name. It's a terrible name. Yeah. I would yeah. not, I would not want my last name. His name should have been Basil Bayleaf. That would have been awesome. Would have been way better. I, by the way, when I was younger, I didn't love my last name. I love our last name. Our last name's dope. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's spelled the right way. For sure. I, I've only met like three people in my entire life who spell Wolf as the last name W-O-L-F. Well, those are the smart people. Two of them weren't that smart. <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, uh, all they right. They don't watch this. Well, listen, dude. Um, I do want to say right off the bat, everybody, first of all, uh, I don't say this maybe enough on the podcast. Thank you all so much for those of you who are listening and watching. And um, our numbers are growing on um, the audio numbers on stand up on Apple. We're in the top 30, which is amazing. Are, are we? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, and uh, the YouTube numbers growing, the people who come to the shows growing. What will help us immensely, everybody, if you can give us, it takes. Two seconds, wherever you're listening, you can give us a five star rating and leave a little review. That helps us so much with the algorithm. Um, we would really, really appreciate that. But I just want to say thank you all so much to um, those of you who are coming out uh, and listening and watching. And also for those of you who have been coming out to the shows, so fucking cool. But we'll see you this week in Orlando on uh, this comes out September 3rd. Oh, okay. So this, we will see you in Orlando. Um, Friday and Saturday, November 6th and 7th. And uh, we're going to do that uh, mediocre podcast again with those two dudes. I oh, love it. This is so much fucking I like fun. Guys. Uh, but yeah, man. All I right, wish, dude. I wish they wouldn't ask us to come over at 7 a.m. though. Well, we're going to have to get no, over there early. Sure, yeah. whatever. But like. Yeah. All right. Maybe eight. Like, uh, whatever. Yeah. What, what are we doing? I mean, uh, we're, what you, else are we got? You get up at 5 a.m. I don't. Well, you do when you travel with me. I know. Um, all right, everybody. So Jacob Wolf, Before, did you want to talk about something from an open mic? Yes. I was just going to say, okay. Okay. Something happened to me at an open mic this past week. Tell me where he touched you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been inappropriately touched or groped in a meet and greet line yet? Yes. Yeah. It's crazy. Right? I got grabbed by a woman on my upper thigh, lower ass. Uh, literally when we were in Arlington, upper oh, thigh, lower ass, sorry, Front upper, and back? Up, upper hammy. Okay. Uh, when we were going to say how we, big were we, her hands, apparently large. When we were in Arlington, I had a woman just like stroke my chest pretty much all the way down to my belt line. And then yeah. I backed out and it was 
crazy. Yeah. Um, I had a I had a a coworker as a PA when I was this is a meet and yep. greet. This was a meet and greet. No, no. This this is a coworker oh. who I don't talk to anymore. I I like she like they don't follow me. We don't communicate. Yep. It was like one time we worked together. Um, it was when I was growing my like growing growing my hair out during COVID. Like when I went two and a half years and didn't cut my hair. Yeah. And uh, I was working in Malibu, and she was like, "You have great hair." And I was like, "Thanks." She goes, "Can I can I touch your hair?" And I was like, "What?" She goes, "I just want to like." And she just starts like grabbing, feeling, and like pulling on my hair. And I was like, "Okay, that's enough." Like, yeah, I don't I don't know where that worked out for you, but that didn't work. Do anything for me? Yeah. Um, I think that's it. But, so uh, so you, you haven't had. I definitely. The grabbing and, and and the inappropriate touches, everybody, just so everyone knows the demographic. It's always an over 40 year old white woman drunk. Yeah, it doesn't always have to be drunk, but it, sometimes it'll be like, hey, do you mind if we take a picture with me cupping your nuts? I'm like, uh, yeah, I do a lot. I actually mind that more than you would think. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, hey, let me just touch your ass once. I'm like, not even once. No. Nah. No. And they'll say, like, what's the big deal? I'm like, if a stranger came up to you and would be like, let me just put my hand on your vagina for let just me, a second let, for the picture. Yeah, let me let me quickly just grab you by the pussy. Yeah. And then just... Whoa. Well, I just thought I'd make a reference. <laughs> it's an election year, everybody. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so I was at an open mic, and uh, I was on stage, and I had just gotten to my first joke, and I'm getting into my next story. And this has never happened to me before at... I might have happened once at one of our shows. I don't know, but it's never happened to me at any open mic or anywhere else. I'm talking and walking around, and the XLR cable falls out of the mic. Yeah. But during, I have three minutes at this open mic, and I'm sitting there, and I was like, like I, I'm just, and then I try to. Will you explain to people what that is, the XLR? Sorry. So when you're holding a your mic, like on stage, you see them, they have the cable that's at the bottom of the mic that plugs into the bottom so you can hear them. That's an XLR cable. And so I'm now sitting up there like trying to like talk, like screaming into the crowd, doing this, trying to get the XLR cable back yeah. in. And, uh, and I was like, it was like, I was, I was like, I'm here. I just got to dig myself. Like I'm in a hole. Let's just dig myself out of it. And I sit there and I start making fun of myself and, uh, I'm going around. Like the first thing I said when it dropped out and people laughed, I was like, oh, come on. The jokes weren't that fucking bad. Were they yeah, like funny? And people went out and I'm still trying to put it in. And then I'm like, I'm like, guys, I, I swear this never happens. Like, I'm, Good one. I'm going with it. And then eventually the uh, manager comes up and she's like, just give me that. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Someone who's not higher than they should be on stage right now in front of all these people. A bummer about it was I that happened so much. And I, I was straight away from the story is I didn't get to finish my bit, which was a bummer. And I tried to kind of cut it off and end on a good punchline in it. And, yep. and it was also, though, kind of nice because it was like, all right, one, you work with what you got. I got myself out of it. We made it work. I made it funny. And two, excuse you, excuse me. Sorry. It's good to know. It's good to know. It's good to know that that punchline that I tried to use doesn't work without the buildup. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. How'd that smell? With, it really smelled like you had your own foot in your mouth. Mm. Um, yeah, dude. It's uh, also sometimes jokes don't work when you stop them in the middle for three minutes. Well, no, I only had three minutes. Yeah. I only stopped it for 30 seconds in the middle, but I was like... The XLRK... What? XLR cable. XLR cable. That won't be the first or last time that happens. Just so you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that happens all the time. I'm aware... Especially when you hold it down here because I, you're I, touching I started... It. I, try, I, I try to hold it in the middle. When I first started doing comedy, I would hold it like I was a rapper. Yeah. And I would hold it at the top. Yeah. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, and then I went a little lower, and I, I guess my hand just went a little too far down. Giggity. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that was a first. Uh, definitely not a last. But uh, it was it was like the the host was like, "Hey man, great job!" And I was like, "Did you just watch the same set that I did?" And yeah. He goes, "Dude, you had to completely improvise for a third of your set because the cable fell out, and you sat there and screamed to the audience, made fun of yourself." And dug you out, dug yourself completely out of that hole. Yeah, you didn't end on a bang, but everything up until that, when you were like, "Oh shit, I got to get out of here," you you made it work. Like That's you, how worked, you do it. You worked with what you had. And he was like, "Great fucking job, and I was dude!" Like, Thanks, last man. night I did a set at the at the Laugh Factory, right? Yeah. Um, and it's ten o'clock show, and there were maybe twenty people there. Yep. And I just sometimes you just gotta. I wasn't gonna do material. 
so I asked everybody why they were there. And, you know, there were three people there whose birthdays it were. I'm like, worst birthday ever, huh? Fact. 20 people in a crowd. And I said, Who's, whose idea was it to come to the show? And it was funny. So we got to all make fun of the people yeah. who are now out of the friend group because they were like, let's go to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes you improvise. It's the thing that I like the most about our job, dude, is that it's not the same ever. You just never know what's going to happen. Never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And, and the more different things that happen, the more confident you'll get on stage. You can't surprise me with anything, dude. No, I think basically 100%. everything that could happen has happened while I'm on stage. So I know how to deal with it all, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. I, so I, I think it's great when stuff like that happens, especially early on in your career. Dude. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was definitely, it was like good for me. Cause like, I'm not completely a hundred percent. I'm pretty close to there, but I'm not a hundred percent comfortable yet at open mics. Yeah. Had it happened at one of our shows, I would have like, I would like, I would have done what I did, but not even skipped a beat. Like it would have just been like, you know, whatever, but to have it happen and not a very comfortable situation for me or a place where I'm super comfortable. Mm -hmm. It was good to know just like I could, I could do it. Cool. God forbid it happens. I also, at, you know, at the mic that I don't like going to, cause I always eat dicks when I go there. Yeah. I had my best set there this past week also. Dude, so. listen, you are growing exponentially. I, I watched, you know, and grandma and grandpa were at your set at Kimmel's. Oh, I know. And, um, a little special joke just for them. Yeah. And, but they were both like, he's getting so much better. Yeah. I always like it. Whenever I come off stage and grandpa sees me, he has a lot of notes, which makes me laugh. Grandpa. What, what were his notes in the car for me when you drove them back? Uh, cause I know he had some. Yeah. They both had one, which is my only real note ever for you. Get to the joke. No. Talk oh. slower. Oh, oh, okay. Your jokes are going to work better. Just take a, take a beat Breath. to slow down. Okay. You know, grandma was like, I didn't understand a word he said. Yeah, it's okay. The rest of the crowd laughed. So it was yeah, good. yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but I would just take a, <sighs> yeah. Okay. Just one, one beat. Okay. You're right. I'm doing like 12 to 15 minutes tonight. You are? Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Congratulations. Thanks. So I'm pretty much going to do everything in my arsenal. Like I love it, that you call it an arsenal. Yeah. If that's, that's what I got. I'm not going to do locked and loaded and give school shooter vibes over here, but like, yeah, like it's it's I've got the light glasses. Yeah, but so it's it's a it's a local show that I'm doing tonight, and there's five of us. Uh, three of us get twelve to fifteen, and then the other two, you know, do their stuff. Uh, but I was I asked him, I go, what like is it like a local show? Is it like just like a bar? Show? Like what is it? And he goes, these are locals who are coming out for a comedy show. Perfect. And I was like, thank God, have fun. It, it was because if it wasn't people looking for a comedy show, I don't know what I would have had. Well, people who go to a comedy show but aren't looking for a comedy show uh, seem like a weird group of people. Well, I just didn't know if it was going to be like a weird like open mic. Oh, got like, it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. Yeah. Tell me, dude, is there anything that we want to talk about today? Um, did you, you heard about obviously like the new stuff coming out about Matthew Perry, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so obviously like, so you heard about all this, yep, right? Yeah. And so like, how do you. Like, what do you side with? Because obviously the doctors are, are like, the doctors think, are getting charged, but also the assistants getting charged. I think doctors should be charged. I think ketamine queen should be charged. I'm surprised the doctor is going to be able to open up his business again. Yeah. He's just not going to be able to write scripts, which is weird. Why would you go to a doctor if he couldn't write you a script for something to heal you? But yeah, I think they both should be charged. I think doctors, there should be such... But listen, nobody's getting, these pills are coming from f doctors who are selling or prescribing, right? Yeah. And prescribing too much. And at this point, if you're a doctor and you're prescribing a 30 day, uh, 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 30 days worth of pills, yeah. you're basically, from what I understand, prescribing an addiction in a bottle, because I think. 30 days of a Viking in a day or an opioid kind of gets you hooked is what I've been told. I could be wrong. I want you all to know I'm not a doctor, nor am I the smartest person on the internet, but that's because just, also just, you know, ketamine is not an opioid. I, I no, I'm talking about, Oh yeah. yeah, okay. yeah okay. I'm talking about in general, these people who yeah, are yeah, prescribing, yeah. right? So ketamine from what also I understand is a very hard, it's very difficult to OD on ketamine. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, these doctors are the drug dealers yeah. of our generation. Yeah. Right. So especially with the prescription pills, which is the fucking, to me, 
the um I know everyone's talking about, you know, gotta get the Mexicans. Okay. You mean the Mexicans who are the doctors? Because those are the people who are pushing a lot of these drugs off on folks. And and it makes them feel like they're not doing anything wrong because it's legal and I got it from my doctor. Yeah. So I think the doctor should get all of them, should get heavy sentences. I yeah. think the ketamine queen, you know, you're just a drug dealer. You, I know you had a cool name. The assistant, I and I this is my personal opinion, shouldn't get charged with anything for this reason. I know a lot of assistants who are asked to do crazy things. Yeah. It's it, Matthew Perry. It wasn't like he snuck in. There has to be some responsibility for the user, unfortunately. And I know they're addicts, but this dude works for this dude. Right. Yeah. And it isn't the first time he shot him up clearly. Yeah. Right. It, it's a fucking crazy bummer. What a crazy talented dude. And from all accounts, you hear a genuinely nice man. Good dude. Yeah. That's what we hear. But the assistant was quite literally just doing, doing his, his job. job. Yeah. And I think, I know it's easy for people at home to be like, he should know or he shouldn't have. That's not the environment that this is in it's it would have been it's really possible maybe the assistant was like hey i don't think this is good for you and he'd have been like fuck you i don't care what you think is good for me yeah this is not your job yeah and he it, like i said he was asking for it not asked but not like but he asked to get shot up yeah absolutely. i i don't i think the assistant when you when the power differential is that big it takes, uh, it would have taken an incredibly internally strong human to be like, I think this is wrong. Yeah. I'm not going to do this. I would rather quit because it sounds like he'd been shooting him up for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So I, I, my personal opinion, like I said, I've, I've known a ton of really, you, you know, Jeff Wilde yeah. used to be, uh, um, uh, who's Annette Benning's husband? Uh, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Warren Beatty. He used to be Warren Beatty's assistant. Who's Warren Beatty? Yeah, you don't need to know. He's yeah. probably 150 years old. Yeah, a guy named Warren is for sure. Warren G. That's He's old, too. He's old, too. Yeah. Warren Sapp. Yeah, he's old. He's old, too. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep going, Warren. Warren does seem like a, a name that isn't used too often. Yeah, have you met like a, like a, like, well, there's a ton of other names where you're like, you've never met a young, like you've never Warren. met a young Warren or like a young, uh, uh, actually Warren's the only one I think I got. Okay, all right. But, I, but, but, um. Gladys. I definitely know young Gladys. I, I, you talk to these people who have been assistants and they're just asked to do weird shit, man. Yeah. And I was and, asked to do yeah. much shit, like weird shit as a production assistant, just because they were like, Hey, like ask these kids to just go do this. I'm not going to say when or where I was. I got called by a producer who was like, Hey, I need you to go purchase a can, a canister of whippets from the smoke shop next door and bring it to talent. And I was like, you can go fuck yourself. He was like, what do you, I, I didn't say that, but I was like, absolutely not. He was like, why not? We just won't tell anybody. I was like, brother, no, I go, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to risk my job for whoever this fucking person is yeah. so that they can get high before they go on stage on the show that I work on. Yeah. If something happens to that person and then it comes back that I bought it, that's a charge. But also then I'm taking, I'm throwing you under the bus a hundred percent. I was like, so I was, I also told him, I was like, don't, I was like, if you want this, I go, you talk to production and see what they can do or you go buy it yourself. And I was like, and if I hear you asked any of my PAs, I'm going straight to my boss with it. I was like, don't come talk to me about this. I won't tell anybody. But That's a very go. internally strong situation. I was, I was, a, I, was a, I was the key. Yeah. Like, I, I, but also like at that point in time, I knew my worth and I wasn't like trying to kiss anyone's ass. Yeah. This dude did jack shit on the show. That's why I was like, no, dude, like. What have you done for me? Nothing. Why am I going to go risk my whole career for you? Like, yeah. I wasn't about it. So, like, 
And then I, good I, for you, dude. Oh yeah. And then I saw him 20 minutes later walking into the parking lot with a bag of whippets. <laughs> and I was like, good choice, my friend. Well done. <laughs> I was like, I was like, how was that hundred foot walk next door? Like what? Hey, what was the rap name I came up with last night? Uh, it wasn't last night. It was Tuesday. It was, was it? Uh, it was when we were on the call with Yola and Marty. Yeah. What was it? Don't know. Uh, maybe my first, my favorite rap name ever. Yeah. I don't remember. You don't? No. Nope. Was it Plan B? Nope. No. Definitely not. Is that a good rap name? Plan B? Nope. Uh, I think, I think lowercase J is a good rap name. Yeah. All right. Anyways. Next. Keep going. I, 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 here's where I fall on this, man. I, it's such a weird thing, but, but, but they're, they're, because uh, it's so hard to say this, because the user is an addict. Yeah. But at the end of the day, also, that is a human making a choice. Yeah. And 100%. so, like, I think the people supplying it, especially when you read the details of how they were supplying it and what they were charging them and all that stuff. Yeah. But you're a drug dealer and your drugs kill somebody, you, you should go to jail. I agree. I, I, I think these, like, the two, so, like, he had a ketamine tolerance. He asked his, he wanted increasing dosages, dosages, but the clinic doctor refused it. He found a guy named Salvador Placencia, an internist who was, went by the nickname Dr. P, bummer. Uh, he partnered with another physician named Mark Chavez, who was experienced with ketamine. T together, they conspired to, they were like, the conspired. exact quote is, conspired, and a text message from uh, Placencia to Chavez says, I wonder how much this moron will pay. Let's find out. Yeah. Those yeah. guys should get everything. Yes. I, I just don't think the assistant should. No, because and, also, like also, again, the assistant's not a doctor. How is he supposed to know that's going to be a lethal dose? And the assistant's going to live with this for the rest of their life. 100%. Yeah. But like, from a, like it's such a fine line. Like, it, it's, it's, it's a bummer for him, 100%. The, what I thought he was going to get charged with was like an involuntary manslaughter. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because that would kind of make sense. Like, yeah, but like, but yeah. I bet you his plea deal probably excluded that. If he had gone to trial, they probably would have tried to charge tried to charge him with that. Who knows? Although I think I would make a great lawyer. I don't. You don't? I don't think you would make a good lawyer. Why not? My closing arguments would be bomb. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Today, I'm asking you to make the hardest decision of your life. Am I defending or prosecuting, by the way? It's your your dealer's choice. Huh? Dealer's choice. No, do, you, do you want to be defending the doctors or do you want to be defending... Oh, am I defending the doctors? Are you defending the doctors or defending the the assistant? Uh, I feel like defending the assistant. Okay. Because that's where you stand more strongly. And well, I, I could also prosecute the... I could, I could prosecute the... I could do anything as a lawyer. The only well, part I couldn't do as a lawyer is the research and the reading. Besides that, I think I would nail a courtroom. I feel like you would just, you would have people tell you information. Dude, and you would performative. Just, and you would just wing it. Yeah, performative. If there was like a... Um, teleprompter? Oh, dude, if I could teleprompt and I had somebody else read, I and I could ask questions and, and definitely get into um, get, making people admit shit, uh, and I'd get them to laugh, and I'd be like, do you think this is funny? No, I don't think it's funny, but you were just laughing. But you made me laugh. Nobody can make you laugh. So you think this person dying was funny? I didn't say that, but you laughed. Did anyone else laugh? Did you hear anyone else laugh? You're laughing at this man dying? Oh, I would fuck him. Oh! Well, I guess if now that, now that I think about it, I guess if you're defending the assistant, you're prosecuting the doctors. I, listen, put me in anywhere. Listen, if at the law firm, if you are a law firm and you have a lot of smart Jews, but that just can't talk in front of people, I'll do it. I will talk for them. Just have them do the research and the reading and, and, and uh, make sure it's on a prompter because I, I'm good winging it, but I need to go back. You're also missing one very, very key part to becoming a lawyer. A suit? Passing the bar. No, 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 no. This is what I'm talking about. I just need you to do the work. But you can't legally go into a court and defend someone if you haven't passed the bar. Nah, we're going to get past that. You won't get past the bar. Y yeah, I'm going to limbo right under it because what I'm going to say is this is they passed the bar already. 
and they're doing all the research. So they're actually the representation. I'm just the mouthpiece. Oh, I would fucking kill it. I've seen so many. Look, here's the thing. When you you watch a lot of law and order, you think you could do it? Come on, dude. When you watch the courtroom stuff, it's great. But then you see actual lawyers do it. You're like, you guys suck at this. Well, one's TV and one's not. This is what I'm saying. I can give you the TV experience where the people in the jurors box are like, this dude cares. Right. I mean, and you, when you, the real lawyers, they just sound like they're memorized. I would flow. I would bring a tear. I I do a couple of real leans on the jurors stand and be like, you know, just a man of the people. I'd loosen up my tie a little bit. You know what I mean? Make some eye contact. Tell them, do you, this is what I've been doing my whole life. I, if you're any lawyers out there and I know, I know the reason you're in law school and your lawyer is that you're really smart and you can retain shit, but you also are all a little socially awkward. There's some of you who aren't, but, but some of you are just terrible in there. So let me get in there. I'm offering my services to you. Um, I'll buy the suit. You don't have to get me a suit. Let me know how that goes. Can I wear sneakers? No. Damn it. I mean, I mean, I don't know if there's a rule against it. How about my white docks? I don't know if there's a rule for the shoes you can wear in a court. I think you just have to have shoes on. I want to tell you something else. I have decided to swag up my uh, wardrobe even more. Okay. It's going to get, I don't know if you will, e- I shouldn't say that. I was going to say ever. This, that's, a, that's a real. Old. But it, the days of me wearing a just a t-shirt on stage may be over. Okay. I'm I, I think I want to swag it up. You know why? Because I I've always wanted to dress like that. Uh, whoa. I don't remember eating that. Hmm. Oh. What was worse? The taste of that or the smell of my burp? The taste of that. The taste of that was re- like real bad. Hmm. Like extra. How's that uh how's that acid reflux doing? Not great, yeah. dude. It's fucking with my voice. It's the only thing that bothers. I can deal with the discomfort. To tell you the truth, the discomfort is not. Everyone's got some aches yeah. or pains. Yeah. It's messing with my singing voice. Right. I'm going to, by the way, here's what I decided about the comedy show. I kind of experimented over, over the last two years. And what I've decided is what we were doing two years ago when you first started Came With Me on the Road. Yeah best version of what we're doing which is which is comedy for about 45 minutes me and you for about 15 and then music for about 15 minutes i kind of got rid of the music yeah and a lot well also because you were trying to save your voice yeah but even before that i was just doing one song yeah so i kind of and i'm not going to do that we're going back to the music i'll be and and early even early shows you and i are on stage together oh okay so I just I just want to go back because the shows were so good, the energy is so good, the people in the crowd are fucking loving that format. Yeah. And so we're going straight back to it 1000%. The yeah, the I I'm planning on setting the fucking stages on fire nice. this fall and winter. So um come on out and check that shit out. Listen, okay. Hit me with a couple of the news stories that you had brought in. I love them. Uh, okay. Uh, there's one I'm looking... I'm looking up this uh, extra thing right now. Okay, that's what it is. Um, so, you did you hear about the Chicago woman getting nine years in prison for stealing one and a half million dollars in chicken wings? What? Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a few questions? Yep. Is her being from Chicago important to the story? That's just where she's from. Okay. I wonder why they put that in there. Is that in the headline? It's literally the headline. Literally, is Chicago woman gets nine year sentence yeah. for stealing one I and a half. Why Chicago? Okay. Well, but, probably they're just giving. Well, because here's the thing: she was a. Uh, can, can I ask a bunch of questions? Uh, or sure. do you want to go first? How about I just give you what the first paragraph is? That gives just like <clears throat> obviously pretty much what the, the thing said. Okay. But so a school district official in Chicago was given nine years in prison for ple- after pleading guilty to stealing a staggering one point five million dollars worth of chicken wings. Vera Liddell. The food service director for Harvey School District 152 near Chicago stole the huge amount of fast food during the pandemic and its aftermath when the wings were meant for children doing remote learning, but were who were still still picking up school meals. Now, see, that part is what's important. Like, that's what I was like, oh, she stole one and a half million dollars, like whatever. That's where I'm like, I like I agree with that. 
the 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 kids were coming to get school meals because, I mean, obviously, like, the uh, I had a great look. I, I when you were when we were poor, I didn't know it, and I I you did you, got, you and mom did great of never really letting us see that. But for some people, and like where I went to school, uh, especially like in public school, there were kids and parents who relied on the school system so that their kids and those kids like those kids could eat during yeah. the day. Yeah, those meals that were provided at school. Where it was was great because the kids were like, oh great, I can eat something, and it was like peace of mind for the parents knowing, I'm so glad they get to eat something today because sometimes shit is rough. Like, yeah, but it's not. It doesn't sound like the kids didn't get any food. She stole one and a half million, dude. That like but they that was, were eating something. There's no way they show up to school and don't get any food. And nobody says anything unless it was the chicken. Unless that, but I'm saying like unless that that was the meal. Oh, uh, okay. Here we go. It was replaced with something, in right? In total, in total, she ordered uh, more than eleven thousand cases of wings from the school district's uh, food provider, and then picked up the order herself in a district cargo van. Uh, legal papers filed as part of the case called the scheme a massive fraud. So she ordered all eleven thousand boxes and took all or all eleven thousand. But orders. the kids were being fed something, is what I'm saying. So it's not. If I would agree with you. If she uh, and by the way, I'm not okaying this, and it's a million and a half. And those wings go to the kids, but I'm sure the kids ate something. Here's my point. Nine years, dude, there are rapists and murderers who get less than nine years. That I, I, nine, I agree. Nine, look, if you're, if nine years is what you get for stealing chicken wings, then let's make it proportionate to what these other people yeah, are getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will say, and I'm super curious, where do you sell... $1.5 million worth of chicken wings. Who do you sell that to? Uh, it doesn't actually say what she did with them. Uh, part of me, because it was the pandemic, thinks that she kept a decent amount of them. But then, yeah. Well, I, she sold them to somebody. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't Is know. there a black market chicken wing? Well, no, because the one, she didn't, by the way, she didn't make a million and a half dollars. She ordered it for the school. And did you I get it. Okay, okay. I get it. But that means, dude, she sold them. I, I doubt she had a freezer that was going to fit $1.5 million worth of chicken wings. I don't even have an idea of how many wings that is. I, I mean, because I'm sure they're buying in bulk anyways. 11,000 cases. So however many. Yo, dude. Yeah. So let's just say there are conservatively 100, 100. chicken wings in there. That is one point. One million chicken wings. Dude, where are you selling that to? I've never even seen a fridge that big. There's no such fridge. No, like a walk-in also, like even in kitchens or anything like that. Oh, uh, fucking crazy. So I, I wonder if like, <laughs> I'm just picturing like this black market meeting and like and a rep from Kentucky Fried Chicken's there and a rep from churches and a rep from Popeye's and they're all like, you know, they're but everybody's got their it's like they're an SNL as their, sketch. They're dressed as their mascots. Everybody's got their, you know, their, their fucking worker uniform on. And they are bidding on 11,000 cases of chicken wings. Yeah. I mean, if that's the ketamine queen, this is the chicken wing queen. And, and I love the fact, I, I, I want to know more about this lady. I wish there was more. The article ends pretty quick. It's a pretty short article. I, that's 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 all I got for you. I think it's terrible. I think you shouldn't be stealing from people. I think it, it, clearly these wings should have gone to the kids. But I want to know so much more about her. Like, wh like I want to know how much money she made, how she got caught, and, and... I can tell you how she got caught. Okay, and where she sold the wings. How'd she get caught? She got caught. So the scheme lasted... Oh, okay, I guess so. It didn't all happen at once. The scheme no, lasted yeah, no way. from July 2020 until February 2022. By the way, the reason you know it didn't all happen at once, dude, is because where would she put all 11,000 boxes? Of and I'm sure the school district would have been like, why did you order $1.5 million of chicken wings? Yeah. And she was like, we're going to have a cookout. You know, the theft was uncovered during a routine audit when it was found the annual food service costs were $300,000 over budget only halfway through the school year. Yeah. I still don't really know how audits work. They go back through your books and they kind of match what you spend to, uh, you know, I don't okay. know either. Ready for this? <laughs> I was on, the price, try to on this, 
The Chiefs, a Chiefs player, Chris Jones, has offered to pay the $1.5 million to, to free the ex-school worker. Um, but I don't even think that's possible. Yeah, because nine years is ridiculous. It's a fraud case. Like, uh, yeah, you're right. The proportions it's for like fraud and child rapists are crazy. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, she's getting some love from uh, Chris Jones. He was offering to pay the school the one and a half million to get her free, but unfortunately, I don't think that's how that works. Yeah, listen, guys, if you have any information, or if you're one of the people that bought these bootleg chicken wings. Please hit me up. I really am dying to know. And also, and are, they that, are they that good? If they are, send me some. Yeah. And if you are worried about, you know, somebody knowing who you are, we'll black out your face and do that voice through your voice. You know, when, you know, when they make your voice sound like not your voice. Why did your mouth move like that? I was trying to make my voice sound like it wasn't my voice. Yeah. Uh, can I be honest? Yeah, you can be honest with me if you want to be honest. You're like with simple me. Jack. You do that. <laughs> and also, it's kind of creepy. I don't like it. Stop doing it. I will uh, start doing it as soon as just not going to look at you for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> like at all. Dude, I, I, I am super curious about this. So, yeah. all right. Thank you. That's a great story. Yeah. I, did you have one more you want to talk about? Yeah. <sighs> so, you know, the pole vaulter from the Olympics who lost because his dick was too big? Do I know him? No, you know of him. I mean, this is what I mean. Of course I do, dude. I've d I've done such a deep dive on this dude's dick. Whoa. Whoa. But I have. I've never done such a deep dive on someone's dick before. Not even your own? I don't have to deep dive my dick. I, why would I deep dive it? I know what my dick is. It's been my dick. I, I would only do <laughs> a deep dive. My, it's been my dick. Forever. It's been my dick forever. It's always been my dick. It's never been anyone else's dick. As a matter of fact, my dick has always been with me. It's like my best friend. You got a friend in me. Or on you, I guess. I got a friend on me. Okay, French pole vaulter, Anthony Amorati. When my dick points straight ahead. Go ahead, sorry. He got a 250K job offer to get into porn. I, I mean, he's not taking it, right? Uh, I, I, my, yo, 250K, are we talking a year? No, it's probably one time. How many videos? Probably one. That's how those offers go. Not that I would know, but that's how. Relax. I don't know. Why would I know? I, but I don't think this dude needs to double down on his dick yet. How much money is he making as a pole vaulter? None. That's but, what I'm saying. But I think he will find that he will get some endorsement opportunities. I, I mean, if I'm beef jerky, I reach out to him for sure. If I sell lampshades, I'm reaching out to him because I'm going to just have him rest one right on top of his dick. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dude, if anybody who's selling lampshades, and I don't know if any, you know, if there's a huge lampshade company, but I would put that there. Um, I would put anybody who sells tents. I would do a, t a tent company and he lives in Europe, man. So in Europe, the advertisements can be a little more risque than they can be here. Right. I, I would, if I was him, if I was an underwear company, a thousand percent, I would have him do it. Um, if I was a dude, uh, if I would maybe, if I had a, like a jujitsu academy, I, if I sold cups like that you drink out of, no, like athletic cups, the ones you put around your dick. Oh. We're talking about dicks. Yeah, I know we are. Which, by the way, I didn't like how I just said that out loud to my dad. Yeah, dude. And eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> so it, he was offered 250. Let me ask you, what's your price? Can what, we, so this is the offer. I just want to tell you the offer. Like what? No, what I don't it, care. I what, don't care. But I want to know what it entails. Like, I, that, like this, it's different situation. Like it's not, it wasn't even to get into like to do a porn movie. It was to do a cam show for an hour. Yeah. I want to know what your price is. Dog, I'm telling you right now, if the company Cam Soda came to me and said, we will give you 250 grand to pull your dick out on camera for 60 minutes tonight, I would say, show me the money. But you won't do an OnlyFans with your toes. You aren't promising that I'm going to make 250 grand. I, I can, have you not met the foot fetish people, dude? They but are. But this is 250 right up front. They are intense. Yeah, but. This is money. You never have to show your face or your dick, just your toes. 
I've told you that you said you would do it. Yeah, but nobody wants to see my normal feet. They want to see yours because they're all, you know, you know what I'm saying? All, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. One of them looks like fucking... Dude, your toes are all... Argh. One of them looks like the guy from the Goonies. Hey, yeah. you guys. Dude, it's like your, it's, your toes are sending up, like, gang signs. <laughs> Is that a gang sign? No, that means I love you in sign language. It's also hook 'em horns, I think. I don't know. No, this is hook 'em horns. This is hook 'em horns. This is I yeah, love bro. you. This is this I is love I love you in sign language. What's this one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you are telling me right now, two hundred and fifty k. If, if if somebody is just cam and you gotta have your dick out for the whole time for sixty minutes, because also here's here's the caveat. Yeah. Ca caveat. 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 They can tip you, no pun intended, during the show. Yeah. So that's 250 just as your base. For 60 minutes, I have my dick out and people can still send me more money? Yeah. But but no toes. I think it's a weird line. I, I think it's... I, I, it just proves that I'm more confident in one than the other. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> bada right. bada boom, you know what I'm saying? Like... Well, I would say for me, is there a price? I no, I would do it for less than two hundred fifty grand. Are what? A hundred grand, I'm in. Okay, shit, a hundred bucks right now would be nice. Are well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, are are you? See, I would do the cam before I did a porn. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You're in the comfort of your own house. Yeah. And also, I feel like a porn movie is just awkward. Yeah, I also. Feel, what are you gonna do? Give me a fucking script that I have to memorize? Like, I just feel if someone watched me have sex, I would just. But feel also, like they were judging. But me also, all the porn, time. porn cameramen are so weird. Like some of the angles they have, where it's like it's not even girl, it's just dude's ass, and I'm like, hey man, who hired you? Like, yeah, I mean that's a director choice. You know, you don't question Spielberg, right? So you don't, you know, whoever's directing these porns, you don't, you can't question their expertise. They're artists. I, 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 I'm trying to think what, if I was single, what it would cost for me to do a porn. I, I just don't think I would ever do a porn, but the cam, ah, the cam, I would do it if I was allowed to make it funny. If I was allowed to dress up my dick and like have it play characters and shit and do like a play. Like a, like a fucking, like it was a pu puppet, puppet show. Yeah. I would do that. Would, it you would, put, would you put strings on top of it? Like it was a marionette? But super funny. Yeah. I've taken one dick pic and I put Groucho Marx glasses on it and I tucked a cigarette in between my nuts and my leg. Yeah. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. But I, I'm not, yeah, it's got to be funny for me. It's got to be on brand and yeah. weird. But well, for you, you could use the hundred grand. Or to this guy, 250 grand. Hey. That's a quarter of a million dollars, dude. Listen, Vivid Entertainment. And Cam Soda. Cam Soda is not a good name. That's the company. I know it is. Why is it called soda? I don't know. Ask them. I am right now. That's no, you're not. Why is it called soda? Oh, oh you were looking at me when you said that. I well, like, you're the other person here. Yeah, we should stop talking about this and giving each other direct eye contact. Yeah, the entire time. good idea. Yeah, uh, um, I, I think we should go. We're already. I I want to talk about the poor thing for a second. At what point? I mean, because when we lived in the luxury apartments, you didn't know we were poor. I was also so young and I barely knew what my dick was at that time. Okay. I'm not sure why we're back to that. I just thought it was relevant to bring it back up. Okay. Giggity. Um, but we were poor for a large portion of your childhood. Yeah. How come you think you didn't realize you were poor? And at what point did you realize and did going to other people's houses or having them come to ours ever trigger anything like that? I mean, when I was younger, I didn't really have that concept of money. Like, you could go up to a five-year-old and be like, hey, I'll give you, th like, $3,000 right now. What do you think you can buy with it? And they would be like, a Lamborghini. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you just, your brain doesn't have that concept at that young. So, I mean, I mean, looking back on it, sure, like, in elementary school and middle school, going to other people's, I mean, in middle school, we still lived in a house, though. Like, yeah. in elementary school, sure, thinking about it now, but, like, it never really crossed my mind. I was just like, oh, cool, like, nice house. Yeah, we Whatever. never... In high school, we still... We didn't talk didn't, about money. No, in high yeah. school, we still lived in that same house. But also, you guys had not the nicest cars I've ever seen you guys have at that point in time in life. When you were in high school, we had a little more money. And yes, in high school, I did go to school with 
Very rich people. Extremely rich people. We were, Holy crap. Yeah, we were not extremely rich, but we were okay. I Look, we were okay enough to where I wasn't ride the bus to school type well, shit. No shame on that at all. But like, those Yeah, I would have put you on a bus if there was one. Which one, the short one? Uh, I would have put you on a bus for sure. I, The fact that people didn't, there was not a lot of school buses was a bummer. There was a me. school bus in Notre Dame. But it was mainly for kids who just had to, like... We were a tenth of a mile away from the school. No, no, I'm just saying, like, but it was mainly for people who had to commute. Like, yeah. One of the kids, like, he was like, oh, I come from Brentford every day. And I was like, Geez. Brentford? Brent, Brent, Brentwood. Brentwood. Brentford's in England. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Brentwood. And I was like, that's like a 45-minute car ride. Yeah. And he was like, add in picking up everybody. Yeah. I was like, well, how long are you on the bus every morning? He's like, two hours. And I'm like, yo, it's 7.30 a.m. Dude. Like, how is that possible? I think that the... And there are people without dough who are listening to this, I think the, we didn't make it so that money had anything to do with our happiness. A hundred percent. So we never were like, we never talked about things that we couldn't do in front of, because we didn't have money in front of you guys, Yeah. because that puts it on you. So you carry that kind of shit. So we never did that. We never talked about it. Yeah. And it's, but, and we always like, if you think of the parties we had, at the house with for birthday parties, if you think we maybe spent two hundred bucks, maybe one hundred fifty bucks. The main thing that you guys spent money on was the giant pizza and a cake. That was it. But we that always we always just tried to make sure that the party y'all just was MacGyvered. fun. Yeah. Like y'all y'all understood y'all and still understand like you know balling on a budget type shit. Like you can make everything look more than what it actually is worth. And yep. also, it's not it doesn't matter what it looks like. It matters that you know, who you're throwing that party for isn't worried about what you're spending or what you're doing. Could also like kudos to you guys as, as parents. Cause I know a lot of people, a lot of my, a lot, a lot of people I know their parents' money problem problems was, was kind of directed at the whole entire family. Yeah. So if you're that young as a kid and worried about where you're like, you're wor- putting unnecessary worry on your kids. They can't do anything about the fact that the family doesn't have a lot of money. Yeah. And so why talk about it in front of them about what you don't have? Yeah. Because the kids will internalize it. Yeah. That's always, that was always the way we thought of it. Yeah. And, and that, but so here's the thing. Even when I say like, like you said, when did I realize we didn't have money? I didn't realize we were poor until you told me. Yeah. And that was years after. Yeah. And after I had moved out of the house, so yeah. like high school, I was like, damn, I don't remember any of that. And you were like, yeah, cause you were a child. And I, why would I put adult issues into a child's brain. Yeah. Like that was, that was what it was. So like it, it that's when I realized I never realized because like the apartment we lived in on Laurelwood loved. It was great. I had like, I had a bed, I had clothes on my back. I had a TV with all 52 first, ep- all 52 episodes of the first season of Pokemon on VHS. I had the Rugrats VHS, the orange one, the Paris. And we also had fun, dude. We that's went to it. the park, we rode bikes, we that played baseball. You, we, We'd go to Trader Joe's. And what we, we made the things that were affordable feel like special treats for you. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And so the, you know, one that I realized, I don't even know, probably when I was like 16 or 17, when you told me. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh, the PB and J thing wasn't for fun. And you were like, no dude, I was trying to pay rent. Like what, <laughs> what do you mean for fun? You think I made sandwiches for fun in yeah. my own apartment? Not no, dude. Yeah. So like. That, that's when I realized. All right. Let me just say, guys, once again, uh, the heat here in Vegas is, is fun and makes me want to drink beer, but I don't drink alcohol, but I do drink the best tasting beer out there. The best day brewing is, be- I call it beer, guys, because it tastes just like beer. It just doesn't have the alcohol. And it is such a refreshing incredibly, t- incredible tasting beer that uh, uh, I-, I can't wait to get home and crack one open. If you are not into drinking alcohol, but you miss the taste of beer and you miss the taste of a cold one and you miss the noise of cracking one open, I am telling you right now, bar none, mark my word, Best Day Brew is the best tasting NA beer you will find it, it, without a doubt. And man, the more I talk about it, the more I hear from people like, dude, it's the best beer I've ever had. Dude, it's the best beer I've ever had. 
And so I would encourage you, even if you drink beer, and there are some nights where you're like, oh, I don't go get some of this. It tastes so fucking good. I'm a fan of the IPA. Um, but love it, love it, love it. We sh- always share our best day in the green room together after shows. It feels very ce- celebratory and nostalgic for me. Uh, best day brew, everybody. And the guy who owns the company is, you know, he hasn't sold it to Anheuser-Busch. And he is a, 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 a small business owner and he's doing a great job. He's an ethical dude. Um, shout out Best Day Brewing. Um, I, I love that beer and take it away, Jacob. Holy shit. Where did you find this, Matt? Oh my God. Idaho Potato Sack is your term of the day. Okay. All right. So and I- as the rules always, you get five questions and one guess. Okay. Um, no. Does it have to do with your nutsack? Correct. One. Okay. Um, is it, fuck did you fuck is this? it have to do with large testicles? Yes. Two. By the way, first time you've ever gone two for two on questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so this is a maneuver you do to somebody. Correct. Three. Three. Okay. Damn. Okay. Okay. Is it, are the testicles in a mouth? No. Hmm. Three for four. Okay. So, so, by the way, still the best run you've had so far. Yeah, but it's not really pain. I, it's kind of what I pictured, but I need. I should have really asked more. Okay, so now, all right. Duh, okay, is is this? Are you sticking the large testicles in an orifice? No. Uh, and what's your guess? By the way, you're never gonna get this. Okay, you ready for this? An Idaho potato sack is when you have such a large sack that you smack somebody in the face with it and you scream who to ho and they go Idaho. Okay. (laughs) How about that? First of all, love your creative. All right. All right. Am I close? Second of all, you're like, I would give him half on that. Right, Matt? Are you smacking somebody in the face with your sack? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a sack smack? Yeah, a sexual act or punishment in which... Whoa, wait, punishment. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. In which the male punches himself in the testicles until they swell up to two or three times the size and they teabag the recipient unforgivably. Wait, that is them going in an orifice. A teabag is when you just drop your nuts on someone's in face. In somebody's mouth. No, a teabag is when you just drop it on their nah. face. It's not in the mouth. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yeah, 100%. No, Go- Google no teabag. because the act is not complete. Hold on. Don't stop shaking your head. The act is not complete until the victim blacks out or receives serious facial wounds. That's not in an orifice. Well, I have to, I have to uh, disagree. First of all, if you ever can knock somebody out with your nutsack, Please call me. And or send a video. I would, I need to talk to you about logistics and I would love to, this is even a video that I would watch. If you can knock somebody out with your nutsack, please hit me up. Actually send it. I will, I would watch it. I would also argue that maybe in this context, the Idaho, what's it called? Potato Idaho sack? potato sack. Is that, but teabagging somebody is putting is putting your nutsack into their mouth. Google it. It's not on the face. That is just the snail trail when you're running across someone's face or the, the potato sack smack. I love a sack smack. As a matter of fact, that if I was a wrestler, that would be my special move. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I know. The sack smack... By the way, don't be so proud of that. I do... I've spent more time on the internet. But also, that. like, it also says repeatedly dips one's testicles in the other person's face. It's a mouth. Your mouth is on your face. This I'm aware of. I hope so. I I, I think my special move as a wrestler is sack smack. Where I smack your sack, you bend over, and then I smack you with my sack. Honestly? Bink, bink. And I knock you out. With the Idaho potato sack smack. You you'd have to like your I feel like your wrestler name, you'd be like, you'd be like the elephantitis. Like you have elephantitis of the nuts. I 
Uh, do you remember what was my n- nickname when Freddie and I were doing the? Was it the manager? The no, the the producer. The producer. I I, I would love to. I think one time might be fun is for you and I because Freddie and I bumped up against it, but we never really did it. We can't wrestle. No, we're not wrestling. Okay, dude. I was gonna say. But I, I would love to come on and maybe do we pick a character, and then we. We, we, what's it called, Matt? When they do a run a promo on each other, that we run a promo on each other. It sounds dirty. Run a promo on each other? Yeah. It, it, you didn't say Sax Max sounded dirty, but you think run a promo? It was intentionally dirty, that one. That's run a, true. I, everybody knowing that is dirty. That's true. Run a promo on each other does not intentionally come off as dirty. I, yeah, it's true. That's true. You're right. All right. All right. That's our time for today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for, as always, for stopping by. Like we said, Orlando Funny Bone, September 6th and 7th. Summit City Comedy Club, September 13th and 14th. And uh, and just Josh Wolf at the Atlantis Casino Resort and Spa in Reno, Nevada on September 21st. I will be in London. Uh, so I will not be there for that. But other than that, as always, thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, we really appreciate you, uh, the newbies, the oldies, everyone listening or watching. Winnipeg, uh, September 26th to 28th. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, and... Thank you guys as always for coming to listen. Um, the energy for me picked up a little bit as we got through it. Um, but you know, sometimes life's going to kick you in the fucking nuts. And, uh, sometimes you just look, let yourself be sad. Let yourself feel your emotions, but eventually. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got Idaho potato sacks by life today. You did. Yeah. You got a sack smack. Yeah. Guys, li- life's going to Idaho potato sack you, smack you, whatever it is. It's going to hit you in the dick. Or if you're a woman, wherever the most pain is. Um, the most penis, the most pain is, well, I mean, the most penis would be, would make the most sense actually. Um, I mean, that's what a crazy thing to say. The most penis. Yeah. I'm going to give you the most penis. <laughs> Josh Wolf comedy on all platforms. I wonder if that, like who's ever, who's had the most penis. Well, that's probably been said before. Yeah. I, we're going to, I'm going to quit while you're ahead for this one. I don't even know if you're ahead though. I point. don't I'm think I'm sure you're pretty far behind. Yeah. Um, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms is Jake Wolf on TikTok and Jake underscore Wolf. Wolf? Wolf. Whoa. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. I'm going to get out of here before he whispers most Most penis penis. again in my ear. Post penis? Do something for someone you love today. Tell somebody you love them. See you next week. Later, everybody. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.